Hey friends, welcome to day two of our watercolor week. My name is Emma Fave, and this week we are going through all the basics of how to get started with watercolor. So if you missed our first lesson all about what you need to get started and some basic strokes, make sure to watch the link below for yesterday's video. But today we're talking all about values. Now, when I refer to values in watercolor, I'm referring to the lightness or darkness of a color. This is a really important exercise to learn and something to practice because we use this in all of our paintings. Using different values in your work makes a huge difference. So let's jump in and get started with today's exercises. Okay, welcome to our second watercolor week video. Today we are talking all about color values. So when I'm referring to the word value, when we're talking about watercolor, I'm referring to the lightness or the darkness of color. So the way we achieve this with watercolor is by adding more water or more pigment. So I'm gonna give you an example. We're gonna start by doing a value scale exercise. We're gonna do it two ways. And in order to do this, you need your watercolor paper. I'm just using my Canson XL sketchbook. So I'm gonna try and use my um, cheaper paper just so you don't feel like you have to use your good stuff at all. I have my Paul Rubens watercolors. This is a pan set, it's pretty basic. It's a really good quality. And then I have my Emma Lefebvre Craftimo collaboration brush. I'm gonna be using a size six for this today because we don't need anything too big or too small. I have my water and my paper towel and we're ready to go. Okay, so we are talking all about value and the value scale today. It is super important with watercolor. It can really add something to your work because if you're just painting in one value where it's all kind of like really, really bright or really, really dull, it can get a little bit, your work can seem like it's a little bit lost. Adding those values really makes your paintings look interesting. So this is a really great skill to practice. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna wet up our brush, make sure it's nice and wet in your paper, nice and wet in your paper, nice and wet on your brush. <clears throat> and you're gonna pick one color today. You can do multiple colors, but today we're just gonna try and focus on doing monochromatic paintings, focusing on the lightness or the darkness of that color. So I want you to pick a color in your palette, anything you want and you're just gonna add some water to that color, making a nice little puddle, okay? And we are gonna start off with a value scale. And in order to do this, we're gonna start off by creating the darkest value. So we need to pick up the most amount of paint on our brush that we can to create a really dark saturated value. So to do this, we have our nice wet brush, we have a little puddle, and you're just gonna swish it around, try and get lots of paint on your brush. And this is gonna give you a really dark value. You have more paint than you do water on your brush. And you're just gonna start off with a small little swatch. And it should be a really nice, bright, darkish value. And that is our first one. Now to do this value scale, I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. The first one is to get the next slightly lighter value. All you're gonna do is swish your brush in your water just a bit, run it against the side, taking off that excess water and you're gonna do another swatch and you're gonna have a slightly lighter value. Now we're gonna to move to an even lighter value. Again, swish your brush in your water, run it against the side, and it's lighter, okay? You're just gonna slowly move to lighter values. And the reason why it's becoming lighter is because you're taking off that pigment and you're adding a bit more water. See how light you can go to like almost barely there. And now this may seem like really light, you can barely, barely see it, but you will be able to see it when it dries darker or when it dries, it dries a little bit darker, the lighter values, you might think it's just, it's so light, you're not gonna see it, but when it dries, you'll see it a bit better. Watercolor tends to dry lighter than when you put it down when it's wet, but the lightest values, sometimes you're worried that it's too light, but it will actually end up looking a bit darker. You will see it. So that is one way to do a value scale, just by rinsing your brush off in your water. The other way you can do it is grab a bunch of that pigment. You can move it over to your mixing well, okay? And start this way. So we have a bunch of pigment there. You can do your little swatch, okay? And then you can just add some more water and water it down a little bit. So it's slightly lighter. Just swish your brush around, add a bit more water, maybe not to the whole puddle, just like a little section of it. 
a little bit more water on your brush. And you're just touching just a smaller amount of it. See how light we can go. Okay, you're just touching a tiny little bit and you have more water on your brush. Okay, and then you can just, again, just rinse off your brush and have this really light value. Okay, you wanna get familiar with how much water you have on your brush versus how much pigment you have on your brush. Now, this is a question that I get often is how much water do you need on your brush? And that's impossible to answer because it depends on what you're painting and what value you are working with or you are desiring to work with. So the rule of thumb for me, when people ask how much water do you need on your brush, I'm thinking you never want your brush dripping wet. You don't want drips falling off your brush onto your work because that will create these little water blooms. A really big tip with working with watercolor is water control. And you always want to just run your brush off against the side of your jar just so you don't have any excess drips. And if you're doing something that's smaller and detailed, you might even want to just tap your brush on your paper towel just to take off some of that excess water if you're doing some small detailed work just so you're not overpowering whatever you're painting with a bunch of water. But if you are creating a big background, you're going to need lots of water to really move that paint around. So you're going to need lots of water on your brush. So it's almost impossible to answer that question because there's not one answer. It depends on what you're painting. Water control is something that I'm going to touch on in this series just because it is one of the biggest parts of watercolor and one of the trickiest parts. So I will be giving you tips throughout the week. Um, but for now, I don't want you to worry too, too much about it. I just want you to focus on getting those dark and light values. Okay, so here's our value scale in little squares. Let's try and do a gradient of a value scale. So let's put a bunch on our brush, a bunch of paint, and we're just going to go along until we kind of run out of paint here. See that? Where it's darker to lighter. Okay? You can just practice kind of going from dark to light like this. Or you can grab a bunch of your pigment on your brush. And we're going to go like this. Let's grab a bit more, make it nice and dark. Then you can wash off your brush just a little bit, run it against the side, touch that slightly, and then keep moving it. Again, wash it off just so you have less pigment on your brush, run it against the side, and move it like that. Okay, a dark to light gradient. Let's try that one more time. Okay, lots of pigment on our brush. Start at one end, nice and saturated. Wash off your brush just a little bit, run it against the side. Touch that so slightly and just keep dragging it. You're pulling it. And we will talk more about gradients in another video. We're gonna do a whole video on it, but this is just a value scale gradient like that, okay? So that's another way you could do a value scale. Now let's put our values into a painting, okay? We're gonna do a simple painting. If you'd like to grab a different color, you can do that. Um, now this is gonna require a little bit of drying time because we're gonna kind of have layers. Layering is another video that we're also gonna be doing, but this is something I just want you to practice in this um, setting. So I want you to create the lightest value to start. We're gonna do a simple mountain scene and we're just gonna have lots of water on our brush. You can pick up a tiny bit of pigment. Okay, nice and light, so lots of water. And because we're gonna be doing a background sky, you can have lots of water on your brush or you can even use a bigger um, brush if you need to. I'm just gonna add more water here because we want this really, really light value for our sky. Okay, just grabbing some water. I'm using a size six, so that's why I know I can grab lots of water because it already doesn't hold that much but I do need to cover this little background area. Okay, so here's our sky. It's really light. I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, but that's how light we want it. Okay, and then we're gonna let that completely dry. Okay, our sky is dry. I know it's really hard to see. It is a little bit better in person. Now you're gonna grab a slightly darker value. So I'm just gonna wet up my brush again. Grab a bit more pigment, not too much, because we want to just a step up from this. And you're just going to create some 
mountains, just some jagged mountains, like so. Just gonna add a little bit of water just to blend it out a bit. I might even use my bigger brush for this next time, just so I can grab a bit more water. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry. Okay, so that's dry. Now we're gonna move on to a slightly darker value. I'm switching to my bigger brush just because if you can see, it's quite streaky. Now there's two reasons why that happened. It's because one, I was using a smaller brush and it just wasn't creating this nice um, flat kind of surface because I had to go back. There just wasn't enough surface area on the brush. And two, it is this paper. This paper um, does have some flaws in the way that it doesn't soak in the color and the water as well so it does leave a little bit more streaky marks and then these little blooms which we will also get into later but that is why and if it does look like this you know what it looks like water who cares you know what just have fun we're working on our values okay so now I'm just going to use my size 12 brush and I'm going to grab a little bit more pigment slightly darker and I'm just going to create another set of mountains now this looks pretty similar in value so that means I need to add a bit more dark, darker pigment there. Maybe even a little bit more like that to get a darker value. And I'm just going to blend it down a little bit. Okay. Then we're going to let that dry. Okay. Now that that's dry, we are going to grab our last value, our darkest value. So lots of paint, really swishing it in there. And we're just going to create our last set of mountains. Okay. And for this, if you want to like add some trees or something, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of playing around here. Like so. Okay. We're just creating a really simple mountainscape and it's not great. This is just playtime. Okay. We're all just playing here. And there you go. And there is our value scale little mini landscape. I do have another video on this where I have done this before. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, I can put it down below. Um, this is also featured in my book, Watercolor Lessons, that is on Amazon. I do go through this painting with a bit more detail and I have a QR code to my previous video. So that is in there if you need that for a reference. But yeah, that is basically a simple little landscape you can do to practice your value scale. So lastly, I just wanna show you a couple of other ways you can play around with your value scale. You don't have to do that little mountain scene. You can just do lines like we did for our swatching video. So our previous video, you can you know just play around with lines and then create backgrounds and like little gift tags or cards just by playing around with different values, just making it really, really, really saturated and then washing it off, making it slightly lighter, just playing around with lines and then you can just create it into some art or you can just practice again, playing around with our basic strokes like we did on the first video as well, you know, creating some fun leaf shapes, okay? Maybe some like little petals for flowers, so we'll do that. We have like this medium value here. Maybe we'll wash off our brush and create a really, really light one over here. And then we're gonna grab lots of paint and create a darker one. And just look at the difference that it makes rather than having dark flower, dark flower, dark flower, the combination of using those light and dark values really makes your paintings look so interesting and so beautiful to look at. So this is something you can just practice with. You don't need to be a pro at painting flowers or anything. You can just create these kind of like petal shapes and just focusing on, you know, using darker and lighter values and just mixing it up. And I promise you'll have something beautiful. And then like we did with the lines, turning those into gift tags, you could do the flowers and turn those into gift tags too. Just play around and have fun today. Work on those values. Be aware of how much water you're using on your brush. Just take note of it and keep practicing and it will become second nature in no time.
Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to watch the rest of this week's videos and yesterday's if you missed it. We are going through all the basics. This is gonna be such a fun week. And by the end of the week, I promise you will feel so much more confident with watercolor. Hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.